Hey everyone, it's Cheryl from Teaching Two and Three Year Olds. We just finished our first week of our Bugs and Butterflies theme, and I'm getting ready for week two. But as I told you in last week's video, I would come back and share what we did for week one and how it all went. So first of all, the exciting part is that our caterpillars arrive. Now we order these from Amazon. These are from Insect Lore. I'll drop a link to this in the video description. And when they arrive, they're really, really tiny. But what's fun about that is that each day, as we see the caterpillars again, they've grown quite a bit. So we like to compare how much they've grown since the last time we saw them. And we're gonna keep an eye on them as they travel up to the top of the cup, then they go into their chrysalis, and then we'll put them into the big butterfly cage and they'll turn into butterflies and we will release them into our yard. So this is very exciting and really ties into our butterfly part of this theme. And so what we did of course was we made butterflies and the first thing I did was I took this template and this is just, there's two butterflies per page. I put it on cardstock, cut them out. This is in my butterfly resource page, which the link is going to be in this video's description. And then we just had them use some dot markers to, to color them. And that was all it was, just simple dot markers on them. And then as I mentioned in last week's video, I wanted to turn them into props. Now you know how much I love props, and I'll be talking about them in a moment. And usually I make my own with printables, but I wanted something that they could make and hold during our butterfly songs. So I did the same method where I put them on, the, on a craft stick, taped them on, and so they have their own props that they're gonna be holding this week while we sing some butterfly songs and then they'll be able to take them home. So that's a lot of fun. And there's other things you can do with this printable too. In fact, if you go to my website and do in the search butterflies, you will see some other ways that we have used this printable. And of course, this is also great for your writing area. They can, you can cut them out and they can put stickers on them or markers or whatever they want to do. And then we also made coffee filter butterflies. Now, this is a lot of fun. This is something I've done every year, probably since I started teaching over two decades ago. And what they did was, the first part was squirting some watercolors onto them. Now, actually, I cheated. These are not, this, this particular size is not a coffee filter. I happen to have some of this paper that feels like coffee filter. I had it left over some, for something else and so I used that. But coffee filters work just as well. What I love about this activity is all the fine motor that's taking place. And since this is only month two because we got such a late start this year due to school closures, our two-year-olds have not yet gotten to use the dropper. So it was a good lesson for them on how to learn how to squeeze and release, squeeze and release, squeeze and release, and getting all those colors on there. I had this one for them. This was their own personal butterflies. As you can see, I then took, we just had these little sticks and I just hot glued, I kind of scrunched up the uh, circle and then I hot glued it onto a stick and then we added some pipe cleaner for the antenna. So that's how those look there. And you can see here, actually here's one before I put the paper on, just so you can see that first we wrapped the pipe cleaner around it, then I hot glued the circle on. And you can see how vibrant they turn out. So we did a whole bunch of these and then I had another size coffee filter, a jumbo one which is this size here. And I thought, let's make bigger butterflies. And so actually one or two children could work on this because it's a larger space. And then I have these dowels, assorted dowels from a recent project. And I just simply put them on. I put this one on the thinner one. So now we have a medium sized butterfly. And then I almost forgot. So we're going to do this this coming week. My 
jumbo coffee filters. These are the ones that, these are a commercial size. And I have seen these on Amazon. A local coffee shop one year donated these to me. I, I w used to go in there a lot and I asked them and they were really nice and donated them. But you can get them, I think I've seen them on Amazon. Uh, Discount School Supply might have them. I can't, I don't know if they still do. But these are fun because you can spread this out on a big tray and then several children can do it at once. So then what we're gonna do is take my larger dowels and we'll scrunch it up and we'll have big butterflies that are gonna hang from here. And you can see I've got a couple right here. I've gotta take the rest of these and hang these all up so it's all around our classroom tree. So that was the highlight, doing those two butterflies last week. This week, we are going to continue making the really big butterflies. And then we're gonna get into the bug part of this theme. And I have these big jumbo bugs. I'm pretty sure we got these from Lakeshore. And if I find the resource, I'll put it in my resource page. Again, that link to that resource page is in this video's description. What we're going to do is we're going to paint the bugs and we're going to make tracks on paper. And in fact, if you got my toddler bugs and butterflies lesson plans, so part of the ones that I sell, that's what, this is one of the activities that's in that collection that our children did. So we're gonna do it again, and then we'll have, some, probably maybe we can wash these off outside, do a little scrubbing and wash the paint off. That's fun too. So that's gonna be another activity that we're going to do. Now let me show you, oh, I wanted to show you, talk, before we get away from the butterflies, part of, I love to be able to show the children how a visual before we do something. And this is one of my favorite books called Butterfly, Butterfly. So before we made these butterflies, we went through this book about a little girl. She sees the butterfly and then she can't find it. And at the very end, there's the butterfly. So I love this visual that, that we have here. And we saw these bright colors and that was our inspiration for making our big butterflies dropping the watercolors on. So I wanted to, didn't want to forget to tell you about that. Butterfly, Butterfly um, is a fun book for that. And then I showed you these last week. This is what we did as far as the butterfly colors. There was a butterfly color song that's in my resource page that we used and I put the magnetic strips on the back. These are laminated and put them on my cookie sheet. And if you didn't see my previous videos, this is just a very small cookie sheet that I got and I spray painted it white and we use it for a lot of different props. This is a free printable. It comes with the, uh, comes with the solid color um, butterflies and also comes with numbered butterflies. So that's a free prop on my website. Then that's all in the resource page. And then I also took them and made them into props as well. So they can use these. Also, we can do some, each child holds one up. And I say, who has the purple butterfly? And then they can hold their butterfly. Who has the yellow butterfly and they'll hold it up. So this is a fun circle time activity that I have over on my resource page. Another prop because last week I mentioned that this entire month is spring so I want to get some pond going in there too. And so we did our five speckled frogs and this is part of my song and rhyme pack on Teachers Pay Teachers and I'll drop a link in the video description but we started with the five frogs on top and then as we sang the song, they came down into the water. And again, I like to put a little handle on the back. I like to hold this, these kind of props, but you could also put this on a flannel board as well, just putting Velcro on the back. They loved this. This was a lot of fun. And some more printables that I have for you for your spring theme. If you did not see this, I just published my spring learning printable packet over on Teachers Pay Teachers. And this is the one that we're doing this week right now. This is the symmetrical piece. So we have, you have the solid piece and then you cut it in half and they just simply have to match it up like this. For my toddlers, I keep one intact and I separate the other one. So I'm making two sets and then they just place it right on top like that. And then as they get used to that, then you remove this part 
and they simply match it up. And when you have several on a tray, it gets a little bit more challenging because then they have to look at it and decide, hmm, does that match? Or does that match? So this is all part of my spring learning packet on Teachers Pay Teachers, which also includes a beginning patterning, which is I wanted to have something that younger children can do, so they just place the matching flower on top. There's also butterflies. There is a sunflower counting activity in there, as well as a fine motor following the dashed lines and curves from left to right. And then there's, few, there's some a few other printables in that pack as well. So again, all of the links to everything I have mentioned are all in my Butterfly resource page. And if you go to the description of this video, you will find that link. I also just wanted to chat quickly about how things have been going because as you know, this is an unusual year and our back to school started in March. We started with only half the class attending at a time doing a hybrid method. And then two weeks ago, we started having all 10 children come at once. So we've only had two weeks of having a full class. So this is odd for me in April to still be at the beginning stages. I'm used to by now, this point in the year, being able to do a lot more. So it's been a real challenge for me to remember to act like it's September and October, because that's what it really is like. So I am so impressed about how they have been following our morning routine, but, and this is something that I really want to stress to you, is that to know that no matter how you plan your school year, you can take every little detail and think you have it all down before school starts. But here's the thing, once you actually get the children in your classroom and you see how they're using your materials and you see how they're responding to your schedule, you might have to tweak. And that's exactly what I've already had to do. The schedule that I had originally set out, I had to already tweak it because I'm listening and observing. And we realized quickly that the children were hungrier than I anticipated and so our snack time was too late. So I also realized that we needed to go outside a little bit earlier than I originally had planned. And then there were a few other areas that I had to tweak just a little bit so that we could get everything done. Our morning is a little bit shorter than it normally is as well. So I don't have the luxury of as much time as I normally do. So still learning. This year has definitely been a learning experience for all of us. But just wanted to remind you that it is okay to tweak things when you see they're not working. If I would have just kept everything the same, even though I saw that there needed to be changes, I, it would be frustrating for all of us. So another thing is, is that we have been working on, I had a question about how we get to our gym. We're using a walking rope for that. So the children know they need to sit down and as I tap their head, they then get up and hold on the rope. So we're using a walking rope to get to the gym. When we go outdoors, it's a very short distance from our classroom. So on that, we do where I say, take a friend's hand, take a friend's hand too, take a friend's hand, take a friend's hand too. And I sing this and they take a friend's hand and they have to hold a friend's hand as we walk our short distance to the outdoor area. So all those little details like throwing away trash and when you, what do you do when you're finished with snack? Where do you go? How do you transition? Where are you before circle time? All of these little details, we started from day one, now we're in month two, and they are like remembering. We still have to do some assistance, but considering that these are two and young three-year-olds, I'm always impressed, but it's always a reminder to me that you have to be watching. You have to be doing the same thing and modeling over and over again, right down to hand washing, getting a towel, drying your hands, here's the garbage, come down from the step stool, over and over again so that your year gets easier. So. Now we're going, we're into month two. We only have about six weeks left of school. This is just so crazy to me, but I'm doing it. We're all doing it. And so I will be back next week to share 
what we're moving into, which is gardening. I love the gardening theme, so I've got my seeds all ready to go. I've got the cups ready to go. I've got a bunch of um, springtime activities to go with that with some flowers. So next week when I come back, I will share that with you. Make sure, if you're not already doing so, to like my YouTube channel, Teaching Two and Three-Year-Olds, click on that bell icon so that every time I publish a new video, you get a notification. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching.